Trump's judge in the January 6th case in Washington, D.C. is an Obama appointee named Tanya uh, Chutkin. She is a, um, an immigrant, I believe, from Jamaica. She used to be a public defender. She is extremely left-wing. She is a, a kind of, I won't say clone of Obama, because it's a little difficult to clone Obama. Uh, besides, as far as I know, she's heterosexual. We won't go there in this segment. Uh, but uh, Tanya Chotkin, she has been taking a very sort of ceremonially pompous attitude that politics is not going to be entering my, my courtroom. I'm not worried about the elections. I'm not worried about the schedule for voting and primaries. We are just going to kind of go by the book. We're going to go by the law. And she's also uh, told uh, President Trump, uh, in effect, uh, don't politicize this. Well, given all that, it's really interesting that Real Clear Investigations has done an in-depth review of the judge's own remarks showing that she is extremely prejudicial. She is the one who takes uh, uh, not only controversial but highly ideological stances and makes statements uh, about things that are, well, they're her opinion to be sure, but these are hardly things that have been either widely accepted or have in any way been established or proven. So, and, and yet this is the judge who has been dealing not just with the Trump case. She's had about 30 of the January 6 cases. She's also notorious for giving more severe sentences than the prosecution asks for. So the prosecutors will say, we want to give this guy probation. And think about it. This is a ruthless prosecution. So these are not guys who are likely to be wanting to any of these January 6 guys to get off light. And yet the prosecution says, let's give this guy probation. And she goes, no, I'm going to throw him in jail. So, and then what's interesting as well is that, is that she makes statements that clearly show where she's coming from. So, for example, we know that in the January 6th case with the special counsel, Jack Smith, he's taking the view that the 2020 election was kosher. The 2020 election was fine. It was no problems, no significant fraud, nothing certainly that could have altered the outcome. And moreover, that Trump was just being reckless uh, and without any justification whatsoever questioning the election. That is the special counsel's view. We already know that. Well, that happens also to be Tanya Chutkin's view. How do we know that? Because she has repeatedly said it. She has repeatedly sort of spilled the beans about what she thinks about the election, and she considers any criticism of the election to be a conspiracy theory. Um, here is uh, Tanya Chutkin uh, commenting in a case uh, about uh, a defendant. He went into the Capitol because, despite election re results which were clear cut, Clear cut? What? Despite the fact that multiple court challenges all over the country had rejected every single one of the challenges to the election. Again, what? The court challenges, not a single one of them looked substantively at the issue of fraud. There's certainly no court that has looked at the evidence in 2000 mules. She's talking about procedural judgments that have to do with standing. Oh, Texas doesn't have standing because Texas is only one state and cannot bring this action in federal court and so on. And she's acting as if that has somehow settled the factual issue of the magnitude of fraud in the election. Mr. Palmer didn't like the result. He didn't like the result. He didn't want the transition of power to take place because his guy lost. She's forgetting the fact that these people had legitimate questions about the 2020 election. And so dismissing these questions out of hand is basically Tanya Chutkin's sort of trademark move. She pretends like there's no there there. She pretends like there is nothing to be adjudicated at all. In another case, and this is a case of Christine Priola, this is a Trump supporter from Ohio, pleads guilty to obstruction of an official proceeding. And uh, Chutkin actually, in talking about this, almost laments the fact that Trump isn't in prison. Here's what she says, quote, the people who mobbed the Capitol were there in fealty and loyalty to one man, not to the Constitution, of which most of the people who come before me seem woefully ignorant, not to the ideals of this country and not to the principles of democracy. It is a blind loyalty to one person who, by the way, remains free to this day. So here's Tanya Chotkin saying, in effect, she's making two points. One is, gee, it's a little disappointing to me that I'm sentencing this woman and this guy and this guy and this guy 
when the guy that put him up to it, Trump, still roams free. It's almost like I, I would love to have a chance to convict that guy. And guess what? Now she does. And the second point she's making is that somehow, because these guys voted for Trump and are loyal to Trump, loyal in the sense that they believe that Trump actually won, that somehow this means they are not loyal to the country. They're not loyal to the ideals of America. They're not loyal to the Constitution. So what? Where does a judge get off making these kinds of outrageous and absurd statements that fly in the face of how these defendants understood what they themselves were doing? on January 6th. The bad news is that judges, uh, even though asked to recuse themselves, and there is a provision in the U.S. Code that says that any justice judge or magistrate judge shall disqualify himself in any proceeding in which his impartiality might reasonably be questioned. The problem is who decides when it's reasonably being questioned. The judges always say, well, no, I think I can be fair. I think I can be impartial. I don't see any problem. And so by and large, when judges make statements, even highly prejudicial statements on the bench, it's very difficult to get them disqualified. And for this reason, I think that Tanya Chutkin will not disqualify herself, will not be disqualified, and will continue in her prejudicial biased way to adjudicate this case. If aches and pains are your problem, Relief Factor is your remedy. Debbie and I started taking Relief Factor a couple of years ago, and we've just seen an amazing difference in our joints. Aches and pains are totally gone thanks to this 100% drug-free solution called Relief Factor. How does it work? Relief Factor supports your body's fight against inflammation. That's the source of aches and pains. The vast majority of people who try Relief Factor order more because it works for them. Debbie's a true believer. She can now do exercises, push-ups, planks, and so on that for a long time she wasn't able to do. So Relief Factor has been a big game changer for her, her aunt, other members of our family, Mike here in the studio, and for many other people. You too can benefit. Try it for yourself. Order the three-week quick start for the discounted price of just $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 800-4-RELIEF to find out more about this offer. The number again to call, 800-4-RELIEF or go to relieffactor.com. Feel the difference.